welcome everyone to Back Talks with me, JCB. Today we have someone who has uh, truly followed their passion, bringing their mother's uh, dream into reality, bringing Uppada onto the global stage, uh, and uh, talking about uh, why Sari is the fabric of freedom. Uh, let's welcome Ramya Rao, the co-founder of Kalanika. Sure. Thank you, Vijay. Uh, thank you uh, for having me on board to share my thoughts on Kalanika and its journey. So I think um, first things first is because I come from a different background. My dad was with the Indian Navy. Uh, we were traveling across the whole country. But it's only later as he retired and he came to this place called Kakinada in Andhra, where I actually pursued my engineering. Um, we also saw that our mother used to go to this village called Uppada, which is right beside Kakinada, sit with the weavers and bring forth their designs uh, out to you know, share it with everyone around. But the typical route that we took was do your engineering, focus on a job. And after my engineering, I started working with HCL Technologies in Noida. Um, and I think I'm really grateful for that beginning because that foundation has been extremely uh, a big reason for me and my sister to follow our passion. And we worked with HCL for about two years, after which I moved to Bangalore to become a news anchor and a business reporter with a media channel. And after which I realized that um, I would have come to Bombay because this is where we were brought up for a while as well and come to Bombay and, uh, you know, do something different, uh, probably focus on, you know, doing more trainings because I was part of the learning and development team in Etsyl. Did that for two years. Then I joined Reliance Industries. And I think that's another big uh, pivotal moment where I experienced, um, you know, leadership, where I experienced people management. And I also saw how big corporates work from scale and size. And it's always good to be working with something as big as Reliance. But I think as we were doing this in 2014, my sister and I saw that I think it's good to bring back mom's dream. Um, you know, you can only take those many saris and take it out. But how about we create a channel where we can actually take Upara to the world? So in short, our journey has been diverse. Our journey has been mixed. But there's been one common thread across. It's to always do what you're passionate about, uh, be it in corporate, be it as anchor, and now being as an entrepreneur. Uh, my parents are in Kakinada. I have a twin sister who's also the co-founder of Kalanika. And I am married and I also have a lovely two-year-old daughter. So that's in short about me and my personal life. <laughs> yeah, it is uh, uh, amazing to hear someone uh, talk about uh, the passion that they have followed. And recently I uh, was talking to someone and then the uh, similar story wherein they said that uh, you follow the passion and put your discipline around that and then make it into business. Then it uh, really uh, gives you returns. And uh, I, I think that Kalanika is on a similar uh, pathway. Uh, so... 10 years journey, uh, Ramya, from 2014 until now. And uh, uh, if I uh, read the articles and go through the uh, old videos and interviews and uh, whatever you have done with Kalanika, which is there on the public platform, I can see that uh, the first four years you are just uh, finding in terms of uh, where to place yourself in terms of Kalanika. And uh, from 2018 onwards, you actually started uh, really taking off. And in the last one or two years, I can see that there is a lot of activities going around that. Can you take us to, uh, through the uh, time period of 2014 to 2018? Why you wanted uh, uh, to do something like this? Uh, you talked about your mom's dream and things like that. But still, uh, for two sisters to, who have been uh, doing really good in their corporate world, uh, why why you wanted to follow something uh, like a side stint? Uh, uh, take us through that. Sure, sure, Vijay. So, um, so 2014, um, I'm pursuing my career in Reliance Industries. My sister is pursuing her career as a corporate anchor and she's doing phenomenally well and I think that's when we observed that uh, mom's passion of sadis was still continuing but you can only do so much by taking it from Upada and uh, you know uh, doing it at a small level. We realized two things for sure as we reached 2014 is uh, there is a lot of scope uh, in this area uh, number one. Two, we in fact started much before this whole word of D2C internet, Instagram, and all of this was formed. Yes, we are also an Instagram first company, but it was not so uh, you know, big back then. We realized that one of the ways to make this Upada more famous and popular is by going digital. So we told our mom that you focus on the weaves, we focus on the marketing. And that's where we uh, actually opened a page. In fact, when we started off, it was a blog spot. And then slowly we opened a page. Uh, why we did that is I think even as we were doing very well in corporate, we found uh, a common purpose. Um, you know, I think somewhere when you go back to your roots, it gives you your purpose to do something different. 
Upad as a village is tiny, but with close to 1,500 amazing weavers, they're weaving something very beautiful, which the world is not aware of. And that's the space that we saw. That I, it somehow felt like it's our responsibility or probably God has brought us on earth uh, to give this purpose that Ramya and Kavya will take this story forward. So since nobody tapped on Upada very well, we said, let's do this. Also because it's closer to kids. So 2014, we just started as a hobby. Uh, we used to model. And when we used to put up photos, we used to cut our head just because we didn't know anything. Just chop the head on the photo and pose. But we started getting orders one by one as we put on Instagram. We were doing quite well. Uh, we genuinely didn't don't come from a business background. We didn't know the marketing aspects and all. We were doing it. Keep, somebody gets an upada sari, we're happy. You get an upada sari, we're happy. So we never focused on numbers and all, but we just focused on let's do as, as much as we can. 2014, 15, 16, cut to 18, we realized the scope is great and scale is possible. And if we go small, then even the story will go small. So 2018, we formed the company and Kala Nika stemmed from Kala Art. And Nika is the manager, marriage word from Urdu, and manager of art forms. Why? Because Kavya and I are both classical dancers. So somewhere or the other, the word Kala has to be there. Our life is incomplete uh, without art forms. And that's why we said, let's do Kala Nika. And um, when we incorporated that uh, as such, uh, we said, okay, now there are bigger possibilities as you form a company. So by 2018, we really saw that there was potential and people started also understanding that this is how the fabric is. And I think uh, I definitely take the credit uh, for Kalanika that we were one of those very, very few people who educated people about Upada and popularized Upada as a village and the sadis that come to Awesome, Ramya. It is great uh, to uh, see someone actually taking a, the effort to bring a small village in India on the, to the uh, to the global platform. Uh, so, uh, tell us about uh, in terms of when you work with weavers, uh, because uh, uh, I uh, have interacted with few of them uh, in terms of doing a few research articles and stuff like that. Uh, I understand that they 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 look at that uh, the loom uh, and they are happy with the sound that which comes out of that and. Uh, they are just focused on that. They are not uh, looking at what's happening outside the world. Uh, they don't know about marketing. They don't talk about much of the technology. They don't even talk about the designs. They keep weaving what they think that this is uh, uh, been traditionally followed and then they keep doing that. Uh, so how have you and uh, you two and your mother, uh, how have you enriched their uh, lives in terms of uh, one in terms of uh, making uh, uh, newer designs and uh, whether uh, there is a new technology or something that you have inculcated into them. Second, in terms of the overall livelihood and uh, the overall lifestyle for them, has that changed over the last 10 years? Absolutely. And, and I love this question. And I think this this is directly about the viewers. So I love this question. So first things first, I think you're absolutely right about one thing. They really don't care social media, paparazzi and all. They love their loom. They will sit on the loom. In fact, we have one of the oldest uh, artisans is 80 years old. And he is just happy that he's weaving. But, you know, to think that you derive happiness out of doing the same thing again and again, the same music again and again, yet create a different design. I think that's that's passion at a very different level. So uh, what we did, what we did differently is because we come with an exposure of uh, the kind of urban uh, culture. We bring in that exposure. We realized your Upada sarees are typically very traditional sarees. So we felt, let's bring in our modern sensibilities in two ways. One is the design of the saree and one is a styling. So what you see me do right now today is a cowl style drape. So Kava and I drape sarees very differently to talk about the six yards of fabric as well. And we've also wear an Upada saree differently so that people look at it differently. So one, when I talk about design point of view, I think it began with Kavya's uh, wedding in 20, 2019, where she said she wanted a Raja Rani kind of design of Jamdani on her pallu. Upada had never done something like this before. They are very, very popular for floral motifs, lotuses, peacocks, and floral motifs. So we created a Raja Rani design. So the weaver is now sitting and thinking, okay, how do I do this? This is a challenge. Cut to recently, and I think I would like to bring this out. We hopefully will come out with a video soon on this. We created a sari called the Queen's Gambit. That's our signature uh, statement, sorry, which is not yet released. And we will be shooting that soon. And we are excited for the world to see. I think you can kind of guess when I say what the Queen's Gambit is. So I remember the, our artist in Shiva Garu, who's, by the way, a BSc chemistry gold medalist. 
but he's passionate about reading and he's, he himself told this to me that uh, Ramya Gauru, it's so nice. I get to do something different. So it's challenging me as well how to do this design differently. And so it's also making me upskill myself. So Kave and I, I think, brought in designs which Upada had never seen in the world. And they had to literally tell themselves, how do we do this? So that's one way of upskilling them through designs. The second is, we also had some of our artisans who could celebrate uh, their children's, uh, uh, you know, let's say functions and all in a very, very grand way by offering lunch to the entire village, by doing a lot more just because of, you know, us empowering them. And that's what uh, one of the artisans' mother came and told us that, you know, because of you, we could celebrate this. Uh, so somehow I feel that, yes, have they built palatial houses and all yet? Not yet. Uh, but is that something that, are they materialistic in nature? Not really. But I think what they like is they want the loom to continue. They don't want the loom to stop. Their happiness comes from there. Second, what they can provide to their children, which is where we come in picture. So yes, and I think third aspect, which I definitely take pride in is we don't take the sarees and pay them three, four, five months later. We pay them up front. It can hit our business model sometimes, and I'm not denying that, but um, it's a trade-off because without them, we don't exist. So this, these are a few things. I'm not saying we are the best, but we are doing a few simple things to ensure that they upskill themselves and they are happy. And if they smile, we smile. Uh, I think uh, the, this also uh, brings into the corporate experience that you have been having in terms of when you look at the customer experience, uh, customer will have a great experience provided your employees and the people who work around with you are happy and they are smiling. So that's when they can put their best foot forward and uh, make sure that the customer is really happy. Uh, so the small, small things in terms of uh, uh, not making them wait for their payment and uh, uh, being part of their uh, small, small spirit celebrations in their uh, uh, life is uh, something which will uh, touch their hearts and uh, they will always uh, be loyal and uh, uh, attached to Kalanika for generations to uh, come. So that's uh, that's amazing to uh, understand that. Uh, so uh, Ramya, in terms of, uh, uh, you said that there are around 1,500 viewers uh, out in uh, Upada. So uh, how many are on board with uh, Kalanika uh, and uh, uh, what are the plans with the viewers going forward? So currently we have only about 70 viewers. Uh, one of the biggest reasons being that uh, with these 70 viewers, we are able to cater to the demand of uh, the Uppada sarees that we get. Apart from that, of course, now we have moved into Bagru from Jaipur, uh, getting when Jamdanis from Bengal on cotton, not silk, because we are very clear our silks will be Uppada. So currently we have only about 70 viewers, but so far, we're able to cater. Yes, do we want to onboard more viewers? The answer is yes, because if you're planning to scale higher and higher and uh, bigger, we will need more viewers on board. And now, after so many years of being in this, it doesn't look difficult because every, in fact, I, I have to share the story. We went recently to Pada to finish some other set of designs and we had two beautiful artisans reach out to us saying, hello, we have been trying to find you for two years. And I'm not making this up. They literally said that they, we were speaking Telugu and he said, we were searching you for two years. And we said, our number is on Instagram. He said, ma'am, we don't understand these things. So we were searching you for two years. We reached out to you. We went to them. It's a weaver's colony in one of the smaller places beside Upada. They weave Upada saris and now they are onboarded with us and their turnaround time is phenomenal. So like how we added these two, we'll be adding much more so that there are newer colors, newer designs and uh, newer creations coming. I think... Uh... Uh, it's more like a plug and play model for you now in terms of since you have seen that and it's also the confidence that the viewers get from uh, the success stories that they have seen around for the last 10 years so that also gives them that confidence to get linked to uh, Kalanika. Uh, so now uh, um, coming into the uh, user end phase in terms of uh, what we get to see Kalanika on Instagram and your know, website. Uh, uh, tell us about why why the big K, uh, where even if you decided that Kalanika, why the big K, uh, that's one. Uh, second, in terms of uh, uh, where are you uh, operating uh, your uh, uh, base, where, where is your base, uh, do you have a warehouse, do you carry inventory or uh, do you keep the inventory in uh, uh, Opada? Sure. So first things first about uh, the logo and as you can see behind. Uh, the reason we did the K is Kalanika is not a common word. In fact, we've had so many people pronounce it as Kalansia. Uh, Hello, am I speaking to Ramya from Kalansia? And we were like, oh, no, it's Kalanika. So we realized we are not a uh, noun, right? It's not Ramya or like how we have a Masaba, Sabesachi. 
it's kalanika and if somebody has to remember the whole name it's like four syllable something should stand out so if you see our logo very carefully it is actually woven threads so there is a spool of threads but maybe people might not instantly remember a four syllable word but let them remember a k because that's an easy recall that's the reason we came up with a k uh, and you know sometimes we used to wonder is the name too difficult but then we realized there's a versace there's a chanel uh, there is a lore so we all have taken time to understand those italian french names so why not an indian name so yeah that's one so our inventory is in uh, two places predominantly our main you can say the central distribution center if you call that as a term it is mumbai everything happens from mumbai your packaging your uh, uh, how you package it how you dispatch it uh, my major inventory is in mumbai we have a home studio in pavai we hope to open a studio soon but currently it's a home studio where we have our employees who come and work out of there but yes we do have some inventory and ongoing inventory happening in upada and there's a reason especially when we get these um request from uh, customers that they want their sarees very quickly and if they are in hyderabad then the dispatch happens from upada because from mumbai if i send it also will reach in one to two days but upada is right there so i would rather have it sent from upada and sometimes when customizations happen and if uh, for whatever reasons we have delayed and somebody needs it immediately then we dispatch it from upada so we kept that also as a center for inventory but predominantly 95% happens from awesome and uh, since you spoke about customizations and uh, uh, if i understand correctly uh, that is one of your uh, usps in terms of uh, sarees uh, because you have the off, off the shelf uh, sarees which are there but uh, uh, you also like uh, when people come to you for customizations and uh, uh, you uh, tend to go out of your way in terms of making sure that they get what they want uh, so uh, tell us about that Sure. Thank you. Thank you for capturing that beautifully because that's exactly what we do. Um, customization is very close to my heart. I handle that vertical for one of the biggest reasons being that um, you know when you own something that's so exclusive for you, you know it can never be made again. I think it gives a different sense of power. And um, it started with one request. When I'm so glad this one client who reached out and said I'm looking for an upada jamdani, but I I have a design on mine. said wow this is interesting let's do this what started as a one you know request today we we take multiple requests of customizations are so simple process the client reaches out to us that's the only way a uh, client by now understands that okay kalanika has a capability of creating great upada sarees they reach out to us and they say hi we want to customize saree and that's when i come on board so i have a direct conversation with the customer we don't leave this to the team if it's customization rama is on board very clear because i think that person touches is important so my conversations go in from days to weeks depending on the um the intricacy of the design what color do you want what motif do you want where exactly do you want firstly what's the occasion is it a wedding is it just for fun or is it some some other occasion we have conversations and sometimes video calls as well once that's done and once so you know this is a place where the customer co creates the saree you know so the, the power to co-create and have your own saree is beautiful uh once that's done i sit with a weaver either physically from anupada or you know on video call and i say this is the expectation let's start drawing it i'm glad we have beautiful graph creators so i i don't know if we all know this that when a saree is made there is a graph paper graph underneath and the weaver has to exactly see that and match it so a graph first level graph is drawn second level then it goes back to the customer and the customer says no i didn't like probably the size of the peacock or i didn't like the size of the motif but this can go back and forth depending on the intricacy some customers are very chill so they'll finish the design within a day some customers are very very particular and it can go to months uh but then at the end of the day it's it's a challenge that we have said yes to so this happens back and forth they freeze on the design then the design goes because once you've frozen on the design then i'm not going to change it because then you know i i don't you know when you're creating a graph if even one change comes i have to create the whole graph again so that's why it's very important that it's not back and forth once that's done and it's gone to them then we give an estimate of 30 45 60 days depending on the design the weaver weaves it and as the weaver is weaving we take videos we take photos we give we make them part of the process because it's their side not in my side as they finish then we do a beautiful packaging um, we customize it and we send it and we just wait for the feedback and so far touch with the feedback has been 
phenomenal. One of our recent customized sarees is eight huge peacocks on the saree. It's something to be seen. I'll probably share the photos with you. It's, uh, you know, when uh, the customer received, she said, this is a dream sari, And I'm so proud that I own it. And guess what? We're not going to recreate it. So it's yours. And it's only yours in the whole world. And I think this is fabulous. Wow. It's it's like a patented sari that people will take out. Uh, amazing. And uh, um, when I look at your website, you have something called a CEO uh, club sarees. Uh, so, and... Uh, uh, Tell, tell us the thought behind that. Uh, is it specific uh, to tap into the uh, CXO levels or is it uh, looking at a woman as a CEO in uh, her all different uh, walks of life? Sure. I, I love this as well. And, uh, you know, we, when we were exploring about the names that you can give to our collections, we saw commonly people say office wear, office wear. And somehow I think when you say office wear, it kind of, um, I don't know, I never found that powerful because office wear can be anything. But here's the deal. First thing is you and I, we are all CEOs of our own lives. Very clear. Second, all of us, you know, aspire to reach that CXO level. But we observed one thing, at least in India and Indian CXOs. The ones who are CEOs, be it your uh, Falguni Naya of Nika, uh, be it even your, um, you know, um, State Bank of India, uh, its uh, chairman, all of them, they all wear sarees. We don't see many youngsters who wear those sarees but as office wear. So we said, you know what, we're going to call this a CEO club because you could be a junior executive in a company or you could be a CXO. The designation doesn't matter. You feel that you are the CEO of your life. You, you are the CEO of the job that you're doing. You are wearing a Kalanika. So we realized that we wanted people to feel empowered when they wear Kalanika. We said, this is a CEO club, not an office wear sari. It's a CEO club and welcome to the club. <laughs> Great, uh, Ramya. And since you touched upon uh, the uh, younger age group uh, and uh, when you typically look at uh, sarees uh, uh, your, t- your target uh, segment is like 30 plus uh, uh, or 40 to 50 age group and things like that but uh, when you look at the gen z and uh, i heard uh, you speaking about gen z in one of the uh, uh, interviews uh, and from there i picked it up and i thought it would be interesting to bring that on here uh, and uh, i also understand from, uh, from one of your conversations that uh, sari can be worn in 300 uh, different uh, of, uh, ways uh, and that gives you that freedom and uh, to choose pick and choose in terms of how you want to wear it uh, and it's uh, gender neutral and things like that uh, coming back to the Gen Z thing, uh, that uh, when you add accessories and uh, elements to the saris, even the Gen Z can carry it uh, in th- the way they want to do that. So t- tell us about that. I think you uh, brought up a good point. Our target audience has typically been that independent earning member who's 30 above, without any doubt. However, we also realize that Gen Zs are actually changing the narrative, if you see today. So if we don't get Gen Zs as our customers, then our scale and size will not grow faster. It will grow, but it won't be fast. And unfortunately or fortunately, today, they call the shots as to who's a popular brand. That's one of the reasons. Second thing is I love that Gen Zs have a voice and they are uh, not scared to share it. So we realize that if we want the Gen Z guys to also like our saris, they'll not buy a seven, 8,000 silk sari because they they don't wear the sari for an occasion they wear sari just to go out for a you know clubbing also or probably for a brunch so our saris have to be slightly different that's when our design changed and then that's when we also got into cottons but we have this tagline and i think this is this is this is kalanika we believe that a sari is the only garment that does not come with a s m l xl tag it does not come with a tag think about it and that's why it's six years of freedom so you might be a Gen Z or you might now uh, be even probably a Gen Alpha, uh, a young kid wearing a sari differently or an 80-year-old, 90-year-old wearing a sari. It comes with a no prior, no, uh, no size tag. So you can wear it the way you want and express yourself. So we realize by tapping on Gen Z two ways, that is through styling of saris and through accessories, which is our color jewels, which is one of a kind. We felt that they would love to experiment, they would love to uh, be part of this narrative at Kalanika as well. And yes, very honestly, if I don't get a Gen Z on board, um, people won't know me. Today, they are the ones who are calling the shots. It's important. That's a very big target audience to have on board. And now our agenda is more towards uh, customer acquisition in the Gen Z space. Uh, that, that's uh, really uh, 
nice to understand in terms of how you look at uh, the different generations and how you tap into that and in terms of catering to their uh, needs uh, and uh, be, being there for if they, in case they want to pick up a sari and uh, do something different, Kalanika is there to do that. What is the technology that you are using uh, in terms of uh, your website and also in terms of uh, reaching out to your customers and all? Is it only through Instagram and website or is it something else that you are also using? Sure. So currently we are uh, very heavy uh, heavy on our Instagram. Major, um, what do you call your sales happen through Instagram and then they come to our website. Now we have a home studio. So people who are in Bombay who take an appointment, they come over and shop and go. But 90% of our sales happens because of Instagram and hence website. Uh, yes, we have um, AI Martech on to, uh, a tool on board as well. Uh, the company came on board just recently so that our retention process is much seamless. And we realized we were not doing a great job in retaining our customers. Our new customer acquisition is quite good, but retaining the old customers is not, it's still there is a lot of room for improvement. And that's why we got this Martech company on board. And uh, we're going to be experimenting to see how our old customers are also again buying Kalanika. Also, because with Kalanika, what happens with the silk sari, you don't need it every month. And neither you need it like, you know, I need 10, 20 in a year. You want it for an occasion. So that is a good and not so good thing for a business point of view. I do need people to buy and buy again, which means I also move into different fabrics. Like summer is approaching here in India and cotton is the only way. So that's when we move into cotton as well. Uh, and so that we can have more customers. But today, our focus is on customer retention. Customer acquisition is going on great, new customer acquisition. So we have this AI uh, market tool on board. That's a little technology we're using uh, to ensure that we are always connected. Awesome. Uh, and uh, when you when you talk about uh, technology, uh, there is a lot of uh, artificial intelligence and talk uh, happening around that. Uh, so has any customer come back, uh, come to you saying of with the customization and he or she uh, uh, using AI to generate something and asked in terms of, uh, can we replicate that into the sari? Yeah, I, I think that's beautiful that you brought that out. In fact, uh, yes, there are quite a few who have created their own designs using AI and they said, hey, we want this. On the other hand, I think some of my ISB, uh, I'm studying for ISB and some of my ISB classmates were brilliant and bright. Uh, some of them came up with phenomenal ideas of how we at Kalanika leverage on AI to actually create an app and, you know, have customizations so that the power of the customization is actually on the customer. So that is our next plan as well, with, because of which we also now need investments. Um, we believe that investments is something that will help us propel for the technological path. Uh, because if I want to start an app, if I want AI on board, I will need heavy investments. But this is a plan maybe one year down the line. For now, customers do use uh, AI and come up with their own designs to share with us. And they also say it blatantly. You know, we have not sketched this, this from AI, which is fine. I think um, we at Kalanika understand one thing. Looms can never be replaced. You want a handmade sari, you can't use AI for it. You will use machine-made sari, but machine-made and handmade are two different. And if you want a handmade sari, the loom will never get replaced. What we can use AI is for, um, I think, uh, customizations like this, for um, marketing, for uh, optimization, and for reaching out to customers, that's where AI will enable us as well. So yes, we will need it and uh, we are getting there. Going back to uh, the uh, sari designs and uh, things like that. So whoever is listening to the uh, episode, uh, uh, definitely will uh, look up at uh, Kalanika and see in terms of uh, what is there. And uh, typically as a customer, uh, if uh, uh, whoever gets in on our website and uh, for a, brand which is just an upcoming brand i would not say an unknown brand it's like an upcoming brand or a startup brand uh, they would always uh, try to see uh, what experience that they can get uh, at the lowest uh, point uh, so they will try to buy the one which is at a, a lower segment and then they will see whatever they say is it is it uh, what is actually happening and then they get that confidence and they come back and start buying products which are the higher category uh, so for a person who wants to come and buy anything from Kalanika, what is the price range that you're starting in terms of the sarees? Sure. So our silk sarees, uh, which are all handmade from Upada, start at 5,800. And our cotton sarees, which are our own creations, handmade again, uh, plain cottons, absolute plain cotton is at 1,900. And cottons with our own signature block prints, which are absolutely gorgeous, 
are at uh, 3,850 onwards. So we have a cotton starting at 1,900, but silks begin at 5,800 and then they go upwards. Oh, great. Uh, so, uh, uh, and when you when you talk about cotton, uh, it is not made at the Upada, if I understand correctly. Uh, yes, uh, it's not. It's not. Uh, in fact, yeah, I think that's, I'm glad you brought that up. Upada actually began with cotton. They oh. were very well known. Upada is actually known for cotton. Uh, this is many, many years back. But soon the weavers realized that, you know, uh, the, from, while they use the word wages, and I don't like it, but the wages for making a cotton sari and what you get in return is really low. It's the same thing. They prefer making it in silk instead because then what they receive is higher. So unfortunately, in Upada, cotton has completely washed out and it's not there anymore. Maybe one or two weavers make it. But actually, Upada was cotton. My mom's first sari from Upada was a cotton sari. And when, when it's good that you brought that up because uh, when I was researching about Kalanika, uh, one of the first videos I think you have done, you, your sister and your mom, in which uh, your mom is speaking in Telugu and wherein she actually spoke, spoke about that British guy and the cotton which was there in Godavari and things like that. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, nice to understand the history behind that actually. Yeah, thank you. I'm so glad you watched that video and uh, yes, that's absolutely true. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so, uh, bringing back uh, Kalanika, and uh, you spoke about the marriage of uh, art uh, uh, and uh, why we, the, the reason behind the uh, art is in terms of your uh, inclination or in terms of your major hobby being uh, your uh, dance, uh, typically classical dance. So, first we'll talk about classical dance, and then I know that you are into something else also. So, we'll talk about that as well. Uh, so, uh, from when you started uh, learning dance, uh, were you both the sisters uh, learning that together? And uh, what is the influence that uh, the classical dance form has got in Kalanika Saris? Beautiful. Um, so yes, Kavya and I both were put into classical dancing, first Bharatanatyam, at the age of three. Uh, and uh, my mother, actually, she's the one who observed that we loved rhythm and we should just start dancing. And somebody plays, even Bhajantri in weddings, they would play and we just start jumping. So she felt, Acha, maybe they like it, let me put them. Uh, because we were in Bombay and then Cochin as well. Uh, it was Bharatanatyam that started. And then we moved to Vijayawada and Antra. That's when we took up Kuchipuri. Somewhere I felt that uh, because also we grew by seventh standard and all your understanding for dance in a different way. We did our diploma in Kuchipuri. We realized dance is um, self-expression. There is nothing right or wrong. You're expressing. Of course, your technicalities are important, but then you're expressing from your heart. And it's so beautiful that uh, somehow, even after during or during engineering, when we were not dancing, we would still bring dance somewhere or the other, somewhere or the other. And while you all see fusion today, back in our engineering in 2001, 2002, we used to take Western music and actually do classical dancing. Of course, there's no social media there, so we never put it out of there. But that was, um, I think the influence of classical dancing on us is so high that it literally comes on sadis. One of my saris that I made for my sister's wedding, when we did the Raja Rani for her, on my sari, which was a pink and green, on the pallu, I gave my uh, weaver my photo of this mudra. So this is my uh, mudra. And uh, there's this photo of me in my seventh or eighth. I said, this is my photo and I want you to replicate that in your weaving. And that's my pallu. So I think no matter what, we will not leave dance. And I think my tattoo also says, I dance, therefore I am. So somewhere or the other, it's part of our identity. And uh, whether you're dancing continuously or not is not the thing. But whenever you think, you think from expression point of view. So yeah, that's that's there. Great. Uh, and uh, talking about the engineering days, I, I clearly remember in terms of uh, the uh, uh, dances uh, during that time. Uh, though uh, now with the Instagram reels and everything, people... Uh, know what's happening but during those times uh, the fusion was the, the big time in terms of uh, mixing your uh, dance forms and uh, doing that and uh, currently we are looking at uh, doing our 25th uh, alumni of engineering and we are uh, looking at the videos back then and I can completely resonate in terms of what you are uh, saying uh, so it's amazing uh, so uh, Ramya in terms of uh, you spoke about uh, classical dance forms of uh, Bharanatyam and Kuchipudi and uh, in the recent years, uh, you have uh, picked up uh, belly dancing and you are a big uh, uh, spokesperson for this, uh, for that, if I uh, if I can put that that way. Uh, because in India, if you look at that, uh, uh, people don't look at uh, belly dancing as uh, the dance with the nuance to that. Uh, and they look at it from a different uh, angle to that. Uh, but you have been uh, talking about uh, uh, belly dancing. And so tell us about that. And uh, 
Uh, will we see something uh, uh, similar to that in the Kalanika designs coming up? Yeah, thank you. Um, so, belly dancing happened by chance. One of my friends was teaching and she said, hey, Rama, come for the class. And I never thought because you not think of belly dancing. This was way back in 2009 or 10. And I just attended her class and I managed to pick some steps. Well, again, foundation is classical dancing. And then I started teaching. Of course, I should be honest that I started teaching uh, without a certification, if I look back now. But then I realized, leave teaching, learn that very well. And I, I have a decade-long experience of learning and, of course, performing belly dance. And I must say, it's one of the most graceful dances. And I am blessed to have had teachers who understood that fusion is not confusion, who believe that you can be a great belly dancer, you can fuse that in classical as well, and keep the sanctity of both. Nowadays, we see people mixing both and you will neither see this, neither see that. But I was taught by people like my all-time favorite has to be Meher Malik, who actually is one of the most uh, pivotal persons who brought belly dance to India. From she, she came from the Middle East and brought in, and I think she's the one who brought uh, revolutionized. She and her students, who include Akriti, Damini, um, all of them, these people who taught me, Sanjana here in Bombay who taught me, they all shaped my belly dancing, uh, uh, you know, uh, form of uh, my expression as well. And if I see both are very similar, it's a, it's a classical dance form for somebody else. And the reason why I talk very openly about it is it's so beautiful, it's so graceful, it's misunderstood uh, because people don't want to understand it. That's it, it's as simple as that. And I think there were not many avenues. Now I think we have opened up, we look at belly dance also as a cultural form. And I think just like a sari, dance also is freedom of expression. And there is no right or wrong interpretation. Yes, your technicalities have to be right. You, you know, if there is some maya, there's a drop, there's a, a isolation. It has to be right. But it has to be interpreted in your own way. So you're the artist here. And you're weaving your movements when you dance. So yes, belly dancing happened for a decade. Then my baby happened. And I think it's been good two years that I've not belly danced per se. But I also believe that dance is something that you can never let go. So I said, let's give it some time. I'm doing my ISB. I'm doing Kalanika. This year, after this year, I'll again get back to dancing. Uh, whether I will learn or not, but I'll definitely perform. And uh, yeah, once a dancer, always a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 great. Uh, and uh, it's it's amazing in terms of uh, when you uh, look at the brand name and when you say that it's a marriage of art and uh, uh, it is not just put it uh, for the namesake. You are actually. Uh, connected to a lot of art forms and you're trying to bring the best of that uh, in terms of like it's like a benchmarking that you're doing with the art and uh, the uh, uh, weaving stories uh, so so talking about uh, stories uh, so um, uh, I, I'm sure that the weavers uh, uh, back in Ka Upada uh, going back to that when where we started the conversation uh, I, I'm sure that there will be a lot of uh, amazing stories which would have uh, 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 happened in the last uh, 10 years. Is, is there anything that you uh, that uh, is in the back of your mind in terms of uh, the journey that you would have seen in terms of weavers' life uh, transition uh, which would have happened? Uh, um... Sure. I think if I share one, which would be where uh, they are more than happy to create something so different in new colors. And um, I think one of the biggest transformation I've seen in them is um, they feel empowered being a weaver. You know, weavers typically are not empowered because they are given a sari to, uh, you know, make. They will make it. That's it. And you might, might not get an order. But I think the weavers we have worked with, they feel empowered. They feel they're part of the Kalanika growth story as well. So that, I think, is uh, very, very uh, fulfilling. Uh, I think another fun story is where um, when Kave and I, because we come with the modern sensibilities and we, we do different studying and enter Upada village, the entire village goes wondering, what did they do with our sarees? <laughs> so it's fun to see them react to us. And whenever we go to these, um, you know, we call it penkutillu in Telugu. Small huts and small houses. In those, in that small house, one entire room is dedicated to the loom. So it's dingy, it's dark, and yet an entire family is flourishing that. So whenever we come with our, you know, for photo shoot, the entire village sums up and they're like, ah, these two sisters have come again. But I think it's fun because they are now enjoying it. And they feel they're part of this growth story and they also feel um, that these two sisters are not coming for themselves. They're coming for us. And I think that shift 
uh, has taken us 10 years. See, first year it would have been like, Achha, ye, these two want to do something. It's for themselves. They want the name. But in 10 years, they realized, no, it was never about them. They are doing all this styling because that's them, but it's about us. So I feel that shift has been remarkable. Great. And I think uh, this is where I think uh, uh, I listened to one of your conversations wherein you said in terms of uh, what they tell you in terms of, if I, I don't know if I get my Telugu correct, Amagaru Chala Bhavandi. So uh, I, I think uh, that's where... Uh, uh, you, uh, uh, you, you can be happy in terms of when you hear that, and uh, uh, in terms of a proud moment, I would say in terms of when you look back at the journey. Absolutely. In fact, uh, our viewers, some of them are ten years younger to me, you know, but we can we never ex address them by name. There will always be a Garu in Telugu. Garu comes with respect. Now they, of course, will say Ramya Garu, Kave Garu, also because we are older to them now. But I have a view, I have an artisan who's twenty five, much younger to me. But I will still call him with a name and a garu. And I think that respect comes from within because of what they do. You, It's not age that commands a respect. It's what you do. And uh, they feel that because they are like, why are you calling us garu and all as well? And then, but you're like, boss, you don't uh, demand, you command us. That's it. So we do that. As well. Great. Uh, so Ramya, tell us uh, what is the plan uh, for the next four or five months uh, so now since you're doing your... Uh, course at uh, ISB bringing uh, uh, the the business acumen uh, or I would say enhancing your business acumen and then uh, uh, trying to bring back uh, your uh, lessons back into the uh, uh, the storyboard. Uh, so tell us what's the plan for the next four, five years, four, five months. Uh. Sure. Sure, Vijay. So uh, first thing is uh, through ISB at least, you know, some things were streamlined at Kalanika, be it your financial reporting, be it uh, the marketing aspects. And that's the elective that I'm taking because I really wanted to understand branding a little more and marketing a little more. Um, so definitely all the learnings, but I think also the kind of alumni that is associated with ISV is brilliant. And my idea is to tap onto that alumni as well soon. So next four or five months, it's to tap on the alumni, tap on the network. But another big plan for Kalanika is because summer is already here in India. Uh, Silks will continue. That's our main speciality and that's our main USP. But we will be doing more of cottons. We got heavy requests from men to create kurtas and shirts for them. And believe me or not, there's a request pending from eight years. So I think our big learning at Kalanika is to you know, do things fast. But I think somewhere we were stubborn that we won't do But we realized we were doing a good job in block prints. So our next plan is to get into shirts, menswear so that they are also part of the Kalanika story. It's not just the women. Second is, we have a signature event called Saris and Sandriyas. It's our own event, which we created. It, uh, the third edition finished recently in Hyderabad. And now suddenly people want to be part of it because it's aspirational, it's beautiful, it's a place where you can connect and it's a place where now going forward, we want to bring multiple single brands. So if I'm a Sari brand, I'll bring a jewelry brand, a skincare brand, four to five brands, get people from different walks of life, come over, we are focusing on community building and, uh, you know, to grow as a community, network with one another, connect with one another and have conversations. So we're planning to drive saris and sandhyas across various cities in India and hopefully maybe international as well. Oh, amazing. We will be happy to help you uh, to do something in Ireland or in Europe or in, even in US. Uh, and good that you brought about the saris and sangrias, which I wanted to uh, talk about. Uh, so when you look at uh, normally brands, uh, uh, when you look at... Uh, Say for yourself, your Kalanika, your small sari brand, uh, uh, because sari world is uh, the market is huge, and you have eighty thousand crore company. Eighty thousand crore is the market uh, that we're expecting by twenty twenty seven. Yes, so it's a massive, you know, a massive right? market, and you're a you're a very small player in that. And still, uh, you are doing uh, uh, something called saris and sangrias, wherein you are opening the platform and saying that uh, fellow uh, brands come on board uh, and. Uh, uh, let's uh, walk this path together. So uh, why that thought? Actually, the original idea of Saris and Sangras was to do it solo. It is only recently we tied up with, uh, we are getting mentored by WeHub, uh, the Government of Telangana Initiative. And it's through ISB that I could actually connect with them, thankfully. And uh, when we're talking about Saris and Sangras in Hyderabad, I reached out to the team at WeHub and they said, hey, there's also another brand who loved your idea. And they are saying they'll also partner in. So in all honesty, it is not our idea to have a new brand on board. And only then we realized, yeah, you want to do things, you want to go far, you've got to collaborate. You've got to do things together. So uh, this is more of an idea from Bihab and glad we could open our mind to thinking that 
collaboration with other brands is so good because see you have sari you have a jewelry you have skin care you have juttis shoes it's all in one so why can't i have all of that under one roof so because in hyderabad we did it with another brand and it was great it went very well and um, i think another good thing that happens is your expenses get divided then your crowd comes to them they crowd comes to you so all in all it's a win win for all the brands so after hyderabad we realized we want to scale this to a bigger level and the possibility of this is high and somehow every time i say sarees and sangrias people's eyes just lit up saying wow this is interesting what is it so we said okay let's go let's do this <laughs> uh, you recently took part in uh, kalagoda the one of the uh, prestigious events uh, tell us about uh, that experience at kalagoda so okay that's i think the one of the biggest highlights for the start of 2024 i think when we got selected in december last year kaga and i were jumping if somebody ever put a cctv they would have seen two kids uh, there's a reason because we have watched kala ghoda from so many years it's been the 25th year was this year in fact and we did apply five years back and then i think we just applied time pass and of course we didn't get selected this year i think everything was in our favor and we applied and when we got selected i think it was it was a miracle we needed because somewhere we were doubting ourselves that are we doing right is it worth it to pursue this kala ghoda the beauty of it is the location it's near church gate in mumbai so which means your kind of crowd that comes to kala ghoda while it's mix of bombay is also predominantly that part of bombay that has a higher spending power and higher artistic inclination and kala ghoda as a event itself is very artistic so of course because this is the first time we just took a half a stall but uh, yeah we 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 did phenomenally well so well that it was morning 11 to night 11 and i don't think we were tired even by being there and trying to talk about upada we had so many people who came and so many who didn't know of us so again you see new customer acquisition and of course some of our friends who said you know we want to support kalanika so we are coming and shopping from you but the new customers got to know of upada uh, we we actually put up our viewers photos to tell them that boss we are not the face alone it's these people and no brand does that no brand reveals their viewers faces and we believe that you have to and in fact we were talking who is this who is this we were telling their names as well and it's okay if you finally go to upad and buy from them they're okay absolutely okay we are not insecure but we feel they they names and their faces deserve that so we did that at kala goda we sold so many sarees and i think we acquired so many new customers we we made we we anticipated something and we made good five times of it so you can imagine the kind of people who came and people came back on the last day to again shop from us one of the things that we didn't do right was we only booked it for 5 days because it was a first time so people came back the 6th and 7th day are kalani ka ka hai and i think somewhere we felt that it's okay next year we'll go full blazing guns of 9 days take the entire stall and now we'll do shirts as well so we'll go full on next year but this experience was a miracle was gratifying was fulfilling and i think it was an answer we needed that we are doing something right uh somewhere you you mentioned the uh, the uh, importance of the sobo crowd uh, uh, and uh, yes uh, if you look at uh, uh, art forms as well as in terms of your fashion uh, south mumbai uh, actually uh, uh, is a launch pad for anyone to go uh, even national or international it's it's a great uh, launch pad in terms of doing that uh, it is in fact we were told sorry but we were told chumbak there's this brand called chumbak they make the most quirky and beautiful things we were told by the kalagoda uh, authorities that chumbak started in kalagoda so you know they actually told us you know chumbak also started in kalagoda next we should probably see kalanika scale that way so you are right the sobo crowd is beautiful for two reasons not just the purchasing power but their inclination towards understanding what is handmade and all is great and somehow we could tap into that crowd finally <laughs> Uh, other point that you mentioned in terms of putting the viewers face uh, 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 in your stall uh, definitely in the last 10 years uh, time uh, there would have been occasions wherein customers would have tried to bypass you and gone straight to the uh, viewer uh, saying that okay i'll mm-hmm. might uh, save say 500 rupees or 1000 rupees if i get it directly done by them uh, so oh, what was the reaction of the viewer saying that uh, uh, okay uh, whether they said okay let uh, let us try this or they said that no we don't want to do that mm-hmm. uh we will stick to kalanika because uh, they are the one who helped us and they will give us uh, uh, the the repeat orders comes from them uh, uh, so what was the reason for that yeah so um if i see honestly none of my customers went some of my friends of course would go to kakinad uh, to upada but then i myself would tell them please go to my viewers and buy 
So at the end, my viewers only benefiting, and we would call the viewers beforehand. That's once so and so is coming. Uh, so ensure that you give a beautiful sari at a good price to them, and it's okay. Because I'll be honest with you, Vijay, you'll go only once to Pada. You're not going to Pada again and again. We know that. Once you bought a sari, you bought one sari, you two bought two, you bought five saris. For the sixth sari, you'll come back to Kalanika. So it's a win-win for me because my weaver is benefiting. Ha, you go to somebody else and buy, then of course I'll be like, hmm, this is bypassing. But you have, if you have bypassed me to go to my weaver, then you're not bypassed. You again come back to me. It's, so it's fine. <laughs> I can, I, I I'm really happy to see the confidence in terms of uh, this is another way of customer acquisition saying that you go and meet my uh, vendor and then you come back to me uh, in the long run. Tell us about it in terms of uh, when you talk about, uh, uh, again, going back to the uh, saris and uh, this thing and Kalagoda. Uh, are you looking to go international this year in any of the events? Uh, any any plans for that? Uh, we, we do have. In fact, uh, that that's a good reminder. We have a form that we have to close after the call I'll work on. That. So thank you. Yes, we do have plans to go international and we should. This is a very good time to go international because the world is looking at India. And the potential is in India. The world is looking at what India is doing and made in India. So this year, hopefully towards the end of the year, we have plans to do some international events, uh, which will be closing on in a few months from now. And yes, we want to take Upada Saris to the world. We, we want to take more of our creations to the world and let people know of Kalanika as well, so that eventually they become our online customers. This year, do we have a plan? Definitely one to two events, not more. One to two events international is definitely in pipeline. I'm going to Singapore tomorrow. So I'm hoping that uh, I make con I have conversations with the right people to take um, saris and sangrias maybe in Singapore. Saris, sangrias, Singapore sounds great, right? <laughs> Plus, uh, great. And uh, tell us about the number of uh, international locations your saris have already reached uh, and customers are wearing that. I have one customer in Ireland as well in Dublin. By the oh, way, awesome. only one, but it's okay. Slowly it'll come to two, three. But uh, we pay. Our eighty percent of our international audience comes from US, definitely. US is our main market, no two doubts about it. Then rest would be, you know, Ireland. Then we have uh, Singapore, one or two, uh, Australia, definitely Australia, and uh, very less from UK and a little more in Canada. We ship worldwide. We ship anywhere. It could be in probably in Timbuktu. We'll ship you there. There's an opportunity, but US is my main. Uh, uh, main uh, you know, uh, market from an international point of view for the best reasons. Uh, lots of Indians there, lots of Telugu people are also there. Uh, even lots of South Indians, so yeah. Great. Uh, so uh, uh, to uh, touch upon the US market, uh, because I, I keep going to US, my brother and sister-in-law, uh, they are there in the uh, US. Uh, and uh, yes, Telugu crowd is big time there. Uh, so uh, just not the US, but yes, definitely the trend will catch up with other countries as well. Uh, when you look at US, uh, the Indian community, they uh, celebrate Indian events at a grandiose scale. When you look at even India, they, they are at a different scale altogether in terms of the community comes together and do things differently and stuff like that. So uh, in case somebody is doing a, a event, say Onam or a Telugu uh, uh, New Year or things like that, if the whole uh, uh, gang of say 20 girls or uh, uh, 20 girls and now the 20 boys say uh, with, with the kurtas, in case they want to customize something and do that, will Kalanika will be able to do that? Absolutely. We have the manpower, we have the bandwidth for it. In fact, uh, thank you for bringing that out. Our first order actually happened at a wedding. We both were at the wedding. Kavan and I were at a wedding and uh, this is beautiful woman. She saw us and she said, I like what you're wearing. I have a wedding coming up. I need 10 sarees. Then a customer in US ordered 150 sarees. Uh, not customized, but at least off the shelf, but she ordered 150 sarees. So our uh, Kalanika actually stemmed from a wedding, from an occasion, and cut to today because of our manpower and the kind of number of weavers we have. If 20, 40 people say, we want this. We have the capability to do it. And uh, those are the kind of requests we are looking forward to, where we are able to cater to them and uh, create some magic together. Awesome. And uh, how many saris you have uh, sold so far across uh, uh, across the, the globe? I think, wow, easily even a lakh, close to a lakh, if not more, close to a lakh for sure. Again, um, it would be definitely lesser than your other companies because silks are high price, right? The average order value is high. Uh, but yeah, uh, easily, I, I think, so one mistake we did is 2014 to 18, we didn't keep account. We just, because I said, it's a hobby. 
2018 onwards, my my husband is one of the biggest reasons to say, where is your spreadsheet? Where is your Excel? And he's like hardcore finance type, thankfully. So then we started like, and then I, it helps because this year I've already seen the number of sarees and they're close to a thousand odd uh, sarees and only Kalanika. We also have Atram, our sister brand. So this, these numbers help us understand that we have easily sold uh, so many, so many sarees across the world. Some of which we don't have covered. Wow, so like uh, six lakh yards of sarees actually can cover a few countries with that. So it's amazing. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, great. And uh, tell us in terms of uh, one, in terms of what is the USP of Kalanika? Uh, second, in terms of uh, uh, two years down the line, uh, what will we hear about Kalanika? Beautiful. Uh, the biggest USP of Kalanika is every Kalanika sari and especially our Upada silk sarees are lightweight. They are they can be grand, but they are light in weight because already the weight on our shoulders are very high to bring us up. The second thing is uh, the color combinations. What we create is very, very stunning in terms of the hues that we use and it stems from nature. And it stems from our travel experiences. We probably go to Bangkok or Turkey. We bring in those colors in. So that's the biggest USP. And of course, we are the only brand in the world that sells only Upada silk. So you think of an Upada, you'll come to Kalanika invariably. Two years down the line, we want to be beyond a sari company. Kave and I have, as we all, we have already shared with you, we have been anchors. And Kave is continuously, I mean, she's one of the top anchors in the country as well. Uh, we believe in the art of self-expression through saris, styling, and through voice. And of course, movements, dance. We want to create Kalanika as a company that helps you self-express. So we're going to start different verticals in the next few years, which will go beyond a sari, but which will cater to self-expression. And that's still on, so I'm not going to give out more details, but yeah, it will be beyond a sari company, but it will be a company where you'll come because you have the freedom to express, and we're going to create that. Wow. Uh, so uh, when I was uh, listening to your co whole conversations, when I was doing research, when you spoke about uh, the fabric of freedom, and now actually you are going to take it to the next level in terms of actually showing in terms of what can be done around that. Uh, amazing. Uh, in terms of so if somebody wants to uh, uh, know more about Kalanika or reach out to you, what is the best way to do that? One of the best ways is just slide us a DM on Instagram. We are at Kalanika because our team and even us, we are very active there. So we'll instantly see it, one of the best ways. The other is we have our own uh, WhatsApp channel, our own number as well, which I can share it with you. If anyone wants to reach out to you through the channel, you can definitely share with them because that's when for customizations, especially through WhatsApp, I have a conversation with them. The other is just go to our website, explore what's there. You like something, shop or just drop us a chat saying, hi, uh, we want to talk more and connect more. So we have all these channels. We are on LinkedIn. We are on uh, Twitter, not much. But Instagram would definitely be today the best channel. We also have our email, which I'll share with you so that you can share with your audience as well. Thank you, Remya, for uh, coming on the show and uh, taking us uh, through the amazing journey of uh, Kalanika, weaving stories uh, uh, for the last 10 years and uh, beyond Saris for the next uh, generations to come. Uh, all the best to Kalanika and the team at Kalanika. Uh, it will be amazing to see the journey uh, in the coming years. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vijay. I think uh, it's been an absolutely lovely to have this conversation with you. And thank you for bringing the story of Kalanka out through your channel as well.